Hi everyone, uh, welcome. So we are going to do this session uh, on uh, managing microservices as a mesh or APIs using Red Hat. Uh, let's give a couple of minutes more for more folks to join. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to get started. Okay, uh, welcome everyone. So 
My name is Satya. I'm part of uh, Red Hat and uh, I look after the developer advocate program for APIs and integration. So we are part of the Red Hat integration portfolio uh, and deal with Red Hat middleware, JPOS, uh, Fuse, Threescale, and uh, you know all of the other Red Hat products that we have. So today, what I'm going to talk about is uh, how the API economy is changing. Where you know where we were uh, a few years ago to where we are now, where the ecosystem of APIs is expanding, the footprint of the number of services each organization has, and the uh, uh, types of services and the traceability they need is changing. So in this world where uh, we are increasingly seeing companies go for uh, solutions like a service mesh, where does API management fit in and how can API management interplay with a service mesh? So uh, I am going to do a short presentation just to set the context, and then I will do a demo on a couple of the use cases that you're going to see me talk about, okay? So the first, no doubt you have seen this, is you have a large and growing ecosystem of APIs, right? So you start with a gateway, uh, and the idea of an API gateway is that all consumers uh, to your APIs and to your services have to access your APIs through this particular gateway point, right? So this acts as the access point to your business APIs. Right, so this is where you secure your APIs. This is where you define your developer onboarding experience. This is where you get analytics and apply your rate limits and provide the various plans, right? So this essentially is what API as a product means, right? So this is where you are allowing your APIs uh, to be exposed to external uh, external consumers and the way you can monetize them, the way you can use that uh, as part of your API economy, right? So in terms of uh, if we talk about an architectural pattern to it, it is a north-south service architecture pattern where uh, services from outside are trying to access uh, your APIs that you're uh, hosting inside your uh, your ecosystem. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, one uh, particular scenario, and as the number of services you have are growing, right? So increasingly, your API gateway needs to be more intelligent than just acting as a proxy to your backend services. Uh, it needs to be able to package your APIs uh, to multiple uh, uh, to multiple uh, consumers uh, and uh, you know pro provide a boutique of APIs that could be used. Uh, so an example of this here is what we talk about as an API as a product concept. Right. So you have uh, the same set of backend APIs. Uh, here uh, you can see the example of five different backend APIs, but we have packaged them as three different products. Right. So we have uh, for our web and mobile consumers, we have provided a web plan and a mobile plan with which they get access to all of the APIs. Right. But perhaps a widget API, which uh, partners or affiliates use, are only interested in the widget backend, right? So they get a different plan, uh, a different product where they only get access to that particular backend service. And similarly, your partners, uh, maybe your shipping partners, get access to your logistics and tracking. So in a way, when you have your uh, APIs defined, uh, you are not limited to how your APIs are defined internally, but you could package them externally depending on uh, who your uh, consumers are going to be and how you would, uh, how a particular plan can make sense to uh, who your end consumers are going to be. Okay, so that's uh, API as a product. Moving on from there, we now come to the world of microservices. So in the world of microservices, you have APIs essentially acting as the inter integration or interaction pattern between microservices. So this could be uh, microservices that you have developed uh, in different domains that need to interact with each other or uh, you know how you have uh, distributed your uh, architecture to in a microservices pattern. But your uh, your services are now scaled to thousands of services, right? And and you need to take care of you know the distributed tracing, the mutual TLS, you know whitelisting or blacklisting of APIs, you know traffic control of APIs, uh, communication between those APIs. So these are all the different uh, 
uh, concerns that you have when you have this uh, microservice architecture. And typically on a microservice architecture, you're talking about uh, implementing a service mesh to take care of some of these concerns for you. And in terms of uh, the architectural pattern we see here, this is an east-west service pattern. You don't have anything north of your application uh, or your uh, ecosystem trying to access your services, but you're mainly concerned with applications that are trying to uh, interact with each other and, uh, and putting rate limiting between the different uh, APIs and how they're interacting with each other. Okay, so what we see here increasingly is, uh, you know, a, a, a concern where you're, you're having service mesh take care of certain responsibilities, which are also provided by API management. Uh, for example, if you have uh, talk about policies or securities or rate limits, you know, an API management platform could do it. A service mesh could also do it. So what is the difference, right? Where, which concerns do you address where? Right, uh, and uh, depending on that, so this slide here packs in a lot of information. So what we tell you here is if who your target audience is and who or if, for whom you are developing these uh, these uh, particular uh, solutions. Depending on that, you should go for the platform of your choice. So if uh, you want that particular. Uh, a service mesh uh, for your services, a uh, targeted user might be your developers or DevOps engineers. Your concerns are more about observability, tracing, you know, resiliency of your microservices, uh, doing chaos testing, traffic control. Those are the kind of concerns you're dealing with. When you're dealing with uh, targeted users who are either API consumers uh, or API creators uh, or API developers, they are more concerned with uh, you know having a developer platform, having API documentations, uh, you know contracts, monetization, having a partner ecosystem. This is where the concerns of API management come into place. And then the third pillar is, of course, application integration. And largely, we see this interplay between API management and application in uh, integration in the data transformation part of things, right? Uh, uh, a lot of uh, fat gateways uh, or, uh, you know, uh, over, uh, uh, you know, overburdened gateways that we have, uh, they would try to do it all. And what we say is, uh, you know, your policies like uh, uh, data transformations or uh, orchestration or content-based routing are better taken care of in your application integration, where your targeted users are again developers and integrators. Okay. So having said that, where does API management fit in there? Whether you go for a traditional architecture of having your APIs uh, created, uh, you know, as uh, services that need to be exposed over HTTP, or you're going for a microservice architecture where you have a uh, service mesh in place uh, to take care of that communication between your microservices, an API management platform is still essential for you to provide that uh, API consumer functionality, you know, the API developer functionality that we talked about, like, you know, providing security, providing analytics, uh, providing a developer portal, monetization, etc. Okay, and we will see here when I show this, uh, this particular slide, what uh, the platform that I'm going to show you in the demo is actually based on uh, exactly this architecture. So I have uh, an OpenShift platform on which uh, I have uh, a service mesh and I have a traditional architecture APIs that are running. And I would show you how we will use three scale to manage both uh, a traditional architecture scenario as well as a microservice architecture scenario. Okay. So uh, just to set context about uh, what Threescale API management platform is, one of the leading vendors of uh, API management, so one of the old players, one of the leaders uh, uh, since the last five years. Uh, and uh, the, the advantage of this platform is, uh, you know, the separation of concerns that they do here uh, with the API manager and the policy enforcement points. So, uh, so there is a, a very thin policy enforcement point that takes care of your traffic between your developers and your backend, right? So, so you don't have a huge fat uh, management platform sitting in between your uh, requests and responses. And uh, uh, this thin platform could be deployed in a whole host of different uh, uh, platforms and just makes it easier for you to host your own gateway wherever you want it. 
but the manager provides you with the, all of the functionality of uh, uh, you know what administrators or what the api providers want to showcase a, a proper admin portal a proper ci cd pipeline uh, proper cli tooling uh, you know providing that particular developer portal for your api consumers or your app developers to interact with your apis providing uh, the self sign up and uh, monetization facility billing facilities all of those sort of things okay so in terms of gateways again those policy enforcement points we talked about uh, so the beauty of the platform is uh, you know that whichever uh, gateway you go for whichever uh, hosted gateway you go for you get all of the functionality of the api platform and all of the functionality that the gateway and the policies that you want to enforce are provided with whether it, you go for the hosted gateway that runs on our uh, three scale saas platform whether it's the gateway that runs on OpenShift or is shipped as a container uh, and you could run it anywhere you want to run a Docker container, whether it's the APIs that we provide uh, for you to embed uh, the API calls within your uh, client application, or whether it's the three scale uh, Istio mixer adapter, which provides you with a plugin to directly uh, plug in your gateway to the service mesh itself. So that uh, instead of deploying a separate gateway to manage your API traffic, you could uh, enforce your API management policies on to directly your uh, service mesh. Okay, so with API management and service mesh, then again, the same separation of concerns that uh, three scale and Red Hat provides as a good architectural principle is uh, know who your consumers are. If you are going to be going with uh, managing that consumer partnership and uh, partnerships and managing that API uh, produce producers uh, interaction with your API consumers, your policy enforcement, you know, providing the portal, the onboarding and rate limiting, providing analytics to the users, you do that all using three scale uh, management platform. At the same time. Uh, let service mesh do what it does best, right? It provides you with that network layer intelligence. It provides you with that distributed tracing ability with traffic routing between microservices, you know, uh, uh, mutual TLS or, you know, security, whitelisting and blacklisting, providing policies uh, for interaction between the various uh, services with each other. Let that concern be taken care of by the service mesh. So uh, with the three scale mixer adapter, what you see here is the mixer plays nicely with the policy, the mixer of uh, uh, the Red Hat service mesh itself, which means that it could plug in and play with the same set of uh, same envoy and the same control plane at which you will, uh, uh, you will uh, operate your service mesh itself. Okay. So, uh, again, so the in interplay between uh, Istio and 3Scale is quite powerful. And you, you would see that uh, when I show you the demo, it will become more apparent to you when I actually showcase you that. Uh, when we see Red Hat's approach to APIs on Kubernetes, right? So uh, again, uh, deploy and scale, uh, it makes it very easy using the ingress router that is provided in OpenShift. The platform itself is uh, highly scalable and provides you with that ability to scale out uh, to you know the millions of requests that you want or uh, you know the hundreds of services that you want to deploy and expose on the platform, right? And uh, using the service metadata that Kubernetes provides you with, it will also enable and make it easier for you to enable discovery of services and importing services uh, and APIs uh, that are implemented and running on the Kubernetes platform automatically onto 3Scale. Okay, and API management itself, the uh, three scale itself provides you with uh, some native features to work on the platform. Things like, uh, you know, installation, operation, and updates using the OpenShift operator, uh, a fully automatable CI CD pipeline uh, using Jenkins, uh, but also supporting Tekton, which is coming up uh, in the newer versions of uh, uh, OpenShift. And then uh, your complete API management platform, right? So uh, what we ship uh, on OpenShift and what we ship on our SaaS platform, exactly the same. You get the same 
functionality of the developer portal, API layer, security, policies, analytics. You get essentially the same platform and the complete platform running on a Kubernetes platform. So, so you could manage it uh, in, in your hybrid cloud, whether you want to host it in your public cloud or whether you want to host it in your private cloud, choice is yours, right? Then uh, providing that extensible control plane and data plane, right? The Istio mixer adapter plays nicely with service mesh. We have seen that. So providing you with that capabilities to use a single control plane, right? You don't have to, uh, if you're using the service mesh and the Istio adapter, you don't have to go into a three scale and try to use the control plane of three scale to enable something. It could be done uh, within the service mesh control plane itself. And then the API gateways itself support monitoring the APIs uh, on both on the platform as well as APIs hosted out, outside the platform. So the gateway doesn't differentiate between the APIs that are running within the same OpenShift cluster or the Kubernetes cluster or uh, external APIs that you're going to manage, right? Yeah, everything is supported. And then also support to the, the newer protocols. So going beyond HTTP and REST, using HTTP2, gRPC, WebSocket, you know, or uh, eventing uh, protocols that are coming in. So providing more and more support using the policy framework that you uh, that uh, Red Hat Three Scale provides, you will be able to support a lot more protocols directly from within uh, the uh, Three Scale API management platform. Okay. So let me start with the demo now. Let me stop sharing this. And right. Uh, so let me also, let me right now share my demo. Okay. Yeah. I hope you can see that. Okay, so he here is the plan, right? So let me just share a, a plan with you. What I wanted to, to showcase was uh, basically two different scenarios. So one was the API as a product scenario that we talked about initially, wherein I want to show you how when you have multiple backends, how you can package it more intelligently as a, a single product to your external consumers and see how uh, you could uh, still use that and derive statistics about uh, individual traffic going to those individual backends. So I will showcase that first. So if you look at um, uh, the mix of uh, uh, mix of platforms that I have as well, uh, I am going to run this particular scenario on our three scale SaaS platform. Okay. So if you are watching this and you are interested in trying out three scale, you could go in there and sign up. The link is in our virtual booth. You could go in there and sign up and you could play around with uh, your own APIs and see how easy it is to set up your first set of APIs and customize your uh, uh, user experiences. Okay. So when you log into three scale, so this is going to be the uh, screen that you're going to see uh, a, a dashboard, which gives you at a glance, you know, your audience, uh, you know, how many accounts you have, how many applications you have running, as well as your APIs, right? So these are your APIs. So in your APIs, if you notice, we have two different uh, tabs here. One is the products tab and one is the backend tab. Okay, so if you look at my backend, so I have got uh, four different backends here. Okay, so uh, so what you can imagine is, you know, suppose I have a, a, a store storefront, right? And for my store, I actually wanted to have uh, four different uh, APIs that have been implemented for me. There was a catalog API that was implemented for me. There was an in inventory API that was implemented for me. A rating API that was implemented for me, perhaps to capture, you know, the user rating of the products that I'm selling. And there is a review API that is implemented for me, which uh, which provides, uh, you know, a user uh, and a description of uh, what they thought about my products, right? So I have these four different API backends. And if you look at my backend uh, definition, it's going to be quite simple. It's going to be my private URL of where my particular API backend is, my actual API URL is that I'm going to hit. And then uh, it tells me at a glance which products are going to be using my backend. 
So with API, with products and backends, there is a many-to-many -many relationship. So as we have seen in our presentation, you could have uh, you know uh, one product uh, uh, one product routing to multiple backends, as well as one backend being used in multiple products. Okay, it's all about how you package your uh, applications and how you package your services to uh, your consumers. Okay. And then I also get uh, statistics about, uh, you know, I could see who has used my API how, uh, backend how many times. So this is purely from the backend perspective. So from the backend perspective, I know this particular backend has been used, uh, you know, uh, if maybe made four hits in the last so many hours, right? I could set up uh, some methods and metrics here, same as I could do at the front end. I have done it at the front end, which is more interesting. I'm going to show this. And then I could specify mapping rules here, same as I could do from the front end, which tells me which are the paths and which are the uh, HTTP verbs that are valid and what is the order in which I'm going to be uh, presenting this set of, uh, uh, set of uh, mapping rules when a request hits for that particular path. Okay. Now, if I show you my front end, so what I have done is my product, I have created a, a product called a cool store product. And uh, what you look at it is, this is basically the packaging of my backends for a business, business user, right? So my business user doesn't see the inventory or the catalog or rating or review. What he sees is a cool store product. And what he chooses is a plan within this particular cool store product. OK, so at a glance, what you can see here is I have a service plan for this. So it tells me what uh, uh, what particular plan that I'm going to provide to the user is, whether I'm going to provide a trial period for this plan to be used or whether I'm going to impose let's say a set of fees or a fixed cost per month for using my, uh, my particular uh, service, right? So these are my service plans. And then stepping back again, uh, you would also be able to see at a glance. So this is again, like the dashboard of my uh, of my product itself. And you could see at a glance here, you know, the analytics, the, the apps that are using this, any alerts that have been configured for this, uh, any application plans that I have, and then finally the uh, integration settings, right? So let's start with the integration settings first, because this is more interesting. And uh, if you see here, and you see the different methods and metrics that I defined, because I'm going to be using four different backend uh, services. Uh, and each service uh, supports multiple uh, verbs and multiple paths. So I would have multiple uh, methods that are defined here. And uh, you know this is a way for me to capture the metrics of which service exactly has how many hits and so on, right? And then I have to define my mapping rules. So what I do here is uh, for each of my uh, backends, I have a different mapping pattern so that, uh, you know, when I get a request for, for the same external service, the, the, it would be routed successfully to multiple backend services through that particular path that you're going to use. Okay, and so when you see here, I have uh, four different backends defined, each of them uh, with a different public path that is available. And this path matches the particular mapping rule that I'm going to showcase. Okay, so that works. And then uh, what you're also going to see is the different application plans that I have. So uh, as well as providing you with a single product for your multiple backends, what I could also provide you with is multiple plans so that you know I could differentiate between a user who suppose has a basic plan where uh, wherein I could you know say limit them to maybe uh, you know certain um, a certain usage limit, right? I could just specific specify that you know they could not make more than two calls a limit two calls a minute right and or i could uh, enforce that they could not make any post requests so i could just say that you know this particular uh, 
uh, this particular service cannot be allowed to make a post request. So they cannot add anything. They could only be allowed to do a get request and do a read only access to my APIs. Right. So I have all sorts of uh, functionality there to fine tune this, fine tune the limits, fine tune pricing rules at the uh, at the method level. So I don't, I have a, uh, an overall pricing you saw at the service level. I could also specify it at the method level, and I could say, hey, for this particular catalog method, people are using, you know, maybe for uh, for each hit. I'm going to be charging you 0 0.001 per unit. Right. So that so that's the way you could do it. And then uh, when you look at this particular uh, uh, service, the way it was set up, then uh, you know when you when you look at the traffic, you could actually see uh, you know the different. Uh, uh, different hits uh, that have come for that particular uh, service. Okay, and uh, so what you can also see at a glance is not just the number of hits, but also the hits to each particular uh, backend, right? So with our mapping rules, we could map it such that we have the hits coming to each particular backend correctly displayed for the uh, administrators, right? What is interesting is uh, this is the perspective of the uh, administrator. This is the perspective of our uh, front end user, right? Now, uh, of our uh, admin user, I'm sorry. So, what happens uh, as a developer, right? So, as a developer, your developers will probably visit the developer portal, right? So, I have a store front end with a developer portal. So this is going to be uh, a customized developer portal with the uh, proper, uh, uh, you know, branding of the uh, of your particular store uh, storefront that you're going to present to the users. So you could have uh, different uh, service plans that are uh, available for your users to choose from. So let's say the user wants to sign up for, uh, you know, for a particular uh, uh, plan. Uh, then they could just uh, they could just uh, sign in as a new user, right? And I just want to showcase how a user sign up experience is, how simple it is, right? And then once the user is signed up, I could see when I look at my user accounts here, and I just refresh this that I see a new user 11 that has signed up. So I could activate the user as an administrator and I could go back here and I could log in as the particular user. And then if I log in as the particular user, I get access to my my customized developer portal. I could look at all of the apps that I'm signed up for, my user keys. You know, I could manage my user keys myself. I could uh, sign in, sign out. I could look at, uh, you know, my own statistics and see, you know, which particular services I have consumed, uh, you know, and uh, and so on. So. Yeah, so you get a whole host of functionality for the developers to have a more meaningful exp experience dealing with your portal. Okay, so this is what uh, an API as a product provides you with. So a traditional API, traditional set of backend services, but you wanted to package them differently, package them as uh, uh, as different products, package them under different plans and then provide access to your users uh, with the self sign up and with the developer portal you know the api as a product functionality is for you right now the second scenario that we wanted to talk about was uh, to use api and a service mesh right so i have service mesh installed here uh, in my uh, openshift platform that i have running so on my service mesh, what you would see here is uh, service mesh defines a control plane, 
okay so control plane is where you would define all of the functionality that you need the policies that you need uh, you know that uh, the destination rules that you need the telemetry that you need right all of those is defined here and what you would notice right away when you install uh, istio service mesh uh, the red hat service mesh on openshift is you have the three scale adapter that is available right away within the uh, the control plane itself so, so remember when we talked about in the presentation that uh, you know instead of having two different control planes to interact with you could have the policies defined you could have three scale pick up uh, you know pick up the matrix uh, and enforce its uh, uh, control directly from istio service mesh you could do that right here so i could uh, enable three scale adapter directly here and uh, you know my three scale service adapter would be running and would be able to uh, then start uh, working uh, uh, and enforcing policies directly uh, using the same grpc transport protocol and within the same microservice architecture in istio itself okay so uh, that's uh, that's my uh, istio system and what i have done is uh, if i can showcase you my uh, platform i have a, an application called a book info application that i have deployed already so this is a microservice application so incidentally the same set of services that you have seen when we were working with api as a product right so now instead of having a set of uh, apis that i have implemented in a traditional way i have these apis in, in, in uh, implemented in a microservice architecture right so i have this implemented as a microservice architecture so i have uh, the details page the ratings the reviews uh, you know the product page so the way that i have set up my uh, services uh, in the uh, in the traditional architecture i have it uh, set up in the same way in my microservice architecture right I could have a look at uh, the services and the uh, you know the, the interactions between the different services, the version, and so on. This is the functionality that is provided by the Red Hat Service Mesh using Kiali. And what I could also do is using Jaeger, I could have a look at uh, you know the particular uh, uh, you know uh, particular tracing of uh, of the requests and responses. So I could see here that uh, you know that uh, there is this particular uh, request that is going through flowing through and it is flowing through using the three scale adapter which introduces a 40 millisecond uh, cost uh, while it does its uh, policy enforcement uh, in uh, in the interaction with the three scale api backend right but what what you have done is you have not introduced an additional hop it's using the same envoy and the same policy enforcement same control plane and the same data plane to enforce the policies okay and so when i hit this is where i would be uh, i would be noticing and what i what you notice here is because i have enabled the three scale uh, adapter uh, the the user application is defined in three scale so when the key is not provided you get a permission denied so where does that happen so i use the three scale uh, again this three scale is running within the same cluster the three scale uh, management platform is running in the same cluster where i have deployed uh, my service mesh so it's all uh, the, the on the open shift container uh, platform that you have seen right so here i have defined the product called a book info and what i have done here is you would see that uh, i'm using an istio deployment here and I'm uh, I'm uh, enforcing an authentication using my API key. Okay, so what that does is uh, it enforces uh, the, the particular uh, uh, Istio to actually go through my uh, uh, my three scale adapter and uh, and check that the user key that is provided for is uh, a, a valid application here and a valid user key here. Okay, so and a valid user key here. So if I provide the same user key, is when my uh, my request would succeed. Okay, and I would show you how simple it is to turn it on and turn it off. Okay, so if I just go in here and uh, you know uh, the service that I that I have running, 
I would just be uh, turning off uh, uh, specifying these two service uh, labels in my service to let my uh, service know that you know it is managed by a three scale adapter. So it tells you where uh, what the service ID is in three scale and what that particular service uh, uh, credit where the credentials for the service are coming from. So if I remove this and uh, if I look at my pods, you would see that my particular product page is not terminating and uh, a new one would start up. And once the new one starts up, I just give it a couple of minutes. And when it starts up, So it would be starting up in a few seconds. And when it does, what you will see is uh, the user key is not required anymore. OK, so the, the response from the application is, is correct. And if I look at my Jaeger, and now if I look at my particular, uh, my latest request, you would see that, sorry, let me just refresh this. Yeah, and if you see here, uh, the three scale mixer adapter is now no more part of the trace itself, which means that, you know, the request is no more using three scale anymore, right? So now let's add it back. I'll, I'll just patch the same to uh, to add those two, uh, uh, you know, the service ID and the particular service, uh, uh, you know, the, the credentials that we can use. And if you see here, if you go to my product page, to my product overview page, this will provide me with that particular service ID for the API calls. So all I need to do when I integrate to my Istio service mesh is, uh, what, where, is uh, because uh, it is uh, a service that is running in Kubernetes that is being managed by my service mesh. It is going to have a service specification in Kubernetes. So all I need to do is edit that Kubernetes object, provide it with that particular ID of uh, the, the service uh, product uh, info, API product info that I have defined in three scale. And then uh, when I go back and when you see here, uh, it would have now redeployed, sorry. It would have redeployed uh, with a different ID now. And now when I try this particular request, it permission denied now, because again, it would expect me now uh, to provide that uh, user key and provide that particular, uh, 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 we, are, we are providing that level of policy enforcement from 3Scale. Okay, and so something very interesting that happens because we are providing that policies and the application plans from 3Scale, you would see that you are able to visualize those uh, usage data of the particular API that you are exposing uh, directly in 3Scale itself. So here is where you are providing all of the 3Scale functionality into your service mesh, right? So I could, define an application plan here as you have seen you know i could provide with a different set of frees and trial periods and you know provide that uh, uh, api level access or deny access to certain uh, certain operations and certain services i could provide pricing rules at this level i could provide billing i could provide uh, you know a, a, a customized developer portal at this uh, at this level and at the same time i could get all of that functionality i directly get an ability to get a set of services from my service mesh package it for my external consumers and i get all of that without compromising on uh, you know the visibility and the policy enforcement from the mesh itself okay so i am able to marry both the service mesh as well as uh, api management and get the best of both worlds and all for the introduction of about 40 milliseconds of uh, additional uh, uh, you know additional processing 
uh, which is you know which is really if you look at how each of these uh, uh, processes is taking a lot more than 40 milliseconds all you are introducing is hardly anything for what you get okay right so thank you everyone uh, for watching i we have a few minutes actually if you have any questions and you want to type it in uh, uh, I would be happy to answer them if it's uh, anything related to what you have seen or any questions on um, uh, service mesh itself or three scale itself. Yeah, please uh, feel free to type. Okay, um, what I also see is uh, Mark Cheshire is here. Mark is uh, our product director for uh, API management and integration. And uh, he's actually doing a talk tomorrow on uh, on the same topic. He wants to, uh, you know, highlight uh, uh, Red Hat's vision on how we, we see uh, APIs and service mesh working together and how to do API management in a microservices world. So uh, I would uh, actually plug everyone to attend that uh, and you know it will be quite a useful uh, presentation for you all. Yeah, the added response time per API. Again, it 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 really depends. Uh, the, it's not necessary that it is only going to be 40 milliseconds. It was just in the example in the cluster that we have seen. But what I wanted to point out was for an addition of uh, about 10 to 20 percent processing time within your microservice, you are getting a complete uh, you know a complete API management world plugged into it. Uh, you could, there are ways to uh, reduce that as well. There are ways to, uh, you know, provide uh, API security uh, keys, uh, uh, caching and things like that, which you could do to, to make it better. Yes. Yes, exactly. So as Mark said, it's just an example of how, how much you are getting for, uh, for, you know, for the little latency that you introduce. Okay, uh, so uh, I know this is uh, going to run again uh, in the uh, in the other uh, uh, other uh, time zones. So we will be hanging out in the booth uh, for the different time zones. So Red Hat has planned coverage for all of the time zones that it's running in. So if you have colleagues uh, in the other time zones or you want them to check out uh, this presentation or the others from Red Hat, please uh, feel free to plug us and. Uh, will be available in the booth and happy to answer more questions on this. Okay, we have four minutes. Any other questions, everyone? Okay, yeah, so looks like no more questions. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, coming to the Red Hat presentation. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, you enjoyed it and you learned something new. Uh, but yeah, so final thoughts from our end is, you know, when you're uh, considering a service mesh, or you're considering API management, uh, you know, very soon your business users are going to realize, you know, I need some functionality from here or I need some functionality of an API management platform. Uh, you know, so you need to be careful in considering and going for a platform that provides you with that ability to plug and play, uh, you know, plug and play each of these uh, whenever you need it. So whether you started with three scale and you want to plug in a service mesh or you wanted to, you started with the service mesh and you wanted to plug in a API management functionality, 
uh, Red Hat spans the whole uh, spectrum here. Uh, and without even talking about integration and uh, you know all of the other functionality that enterprise integration brings, uh, Red Hat pretty much has the full portfolio uh, of functionality that you're going to see here. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, I hope I'll see you around in the booth and uh, you know in the networking area. Enjoy API days over today and tomorrow. Thank you.